Hi, everybody, and welcome to Arabian Knits Podcast. My name is Corinne, and I am the yarn dyer behind Hawari Bazaar Yarn Company. And welcome to episode one. So, first off, I'd like to say thank you to anyone who's watching right now. Um, I, this is the first time I've ever tried anything like this, so I'm a bit nervous. I apologize if I fidget or say um too much. Uh, I'm pretty nervous. So, thank you very much for being here, and I hope I don't bore you to tears. <laughs> so, I started this podcast to kind of get to know the knitting community a little bit better. Um, I'm pretty shy, and I have a hard time putting myself out there. So, I figured this would be an easy way to, an easier way, rather, to kind of get to know you guys and um, to meet new people. So, um, I am on a few places in social media. Uh, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry. And I have a Facebook page, but I don't use it very often. So, um, I am at Hawari Bazaar Yarn Co. on Instagram. And I'm C. Hawari on Ravelry. And I'll leave all the information down below. So, you can find me there. If you're interested, um, leave me a message. Say hello. I'd love to meet you guys. So, I just wanted to introduce myself. Um, I started Hawari Bazaar on April 1st of this year, 2017. Uh, but my first real shop update wasn't until uh, September 13. So, that was just a couple of months ago. And I wanted to thank anybody who's purchased from me so far. Your guys' support means the world to me. Thank you. Um, so yeah, I've only been knitting for about three years, crocheting for about six, maybe seven. Um, but the first time I picked up knitting, which was years ago, I started off with like what I wanted to be a scarf, which was about that wide. And then about 20 rows later, it just, it got to be about this wide. So it basically looked like a whale's tail. Yeah, we don't talk about that. That was pretty bad. Um... I actually tried finding it to show you guys. I don't know where it is. Um, probably burned it. It was a hot mess. So we'll just take my word for it. It was pretty bad. So I put the needles down for a long time. And I picked them back up a couple years ago. Because I wanted to knit myself some wrist warmers. So um, I went out and I bought some 10 inch. Sorry. No. 10 millimeter needles. Um, circular needles and some some wool um, and I made these so these were my very first pair of or very first knitted items and I don't know what's happening here like I didn't know what I was doing yeah they're pretty bad they're pretty rough but I mean they they do their job right uh, the yarn itself it's not too soft it's soft enough where it doesn't bother me on my arms um, but I have no idea what it is. I wouldn't want a scarf made out of this, personally. But it, 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 they work well as wrist warmers. Um, they're still fairly new because they wouldn't fit into the arm of my coat. So I haven't worn them that much. But yeah, I mean, I made wrist warmers. I guess that's all that matters, right? So yeah, after the wrist warmers, I wanted to knit a cowl. So I went online and I found this kit and I knit this guy. And it's huge. Um, I think it's a, it's a We Are Knitters uh, cowl or snood, as they call it. And um, it's massive. Like, look at this. I can't even, I can't even uh, <laughs> show my face. It is so bulky and it's so warm. I got to say, for these Michigan winters, it's, it's perfect. But... I mean, it was like all the way out here, so it made me feel a little claustrophobic, but, um, like, yeah, like, look, it's huge. Okay, that wasn't the best idea. Ugh. But yeah, so, um, I showed it to a couple of friends and, oh, there, I showed it to a couple of friends and they, um, suggested I turn it into a pillowcase, uh, since I wasn't wearing it as a cowl. And I think that's a great idea. So I've sewed, I've sewn up the bottom and, oh, let's not show you that terrible mattress attempt at a mattress stitch. 
But, um, so yeah, I sewed up the bottom and I'm probably going to pop on some buttons up here and then it'll be a pillowcase instead. I think it'll work better that way. It's soft and squishy and, and I just think that will be better. <laughs> so those are my very first, uh, knitting projects. Um, this is another one. After the cowl, I did, I made this blanket, which is also from We Are Knitters. Um, it's really soft also. So I like their wool. Their wool is soft. It's nice. Um, and it comes with like the needles and the pattern and everything. So it's a nice beginner's, um, kit to kind of give off to people, um, and to me. <laughs> so after that, I kind of stuck to blankets. Um, I was a bit of a chicken and I didn't want to, to use needles that were smaller than like say a 10. Um, but then earlier this year, actually, I kind of wised up and decided that I needed to knit a shawl. So I knit this one, the Changing Staircases uh, shawl from Tristan of Dragon Hard Yarn. And look how beautiful that is. I love it. The yarn that I used is Yarn Cafe Creations uh, Weathering the Storm. And... It's just, it's gorgeous. It's got like grays and pinks and these flecks of blue. And yeah, it's, it, it's, I, I love it. I have nothing else to say. I haven't blocked it though. Uh, I kind of went out of the country and when I came back, I forgot all about it. But the only thing I would say is that it's a little small for me and that's my fault. Um, not the pattern. It suggests you go to the end of the skein, and I think I still have about 20 grams left. So it could have been bigger. And it also, I haven't blocked it yet, so I could probably bigger, I mean, probably grow and get bigger after I block it. Yeah, it's a little, it, it just needs some love. But um, I love it, so I can't wait to wear this. Now that it's cold out, I can finally, you know, start pulling out my sweaters and my shawls and stuff. Well, I'm, I'm knitting more now, but this is my first completed shawl. And then after that, um, I got a little ambitious and a little brave and I decided I was going to knit some socks as well. And I finished these. Now what's really exciting about these is that it's the very first, ugh, see my lighting is so bad. These are white and blue. It's coming off kind of green, isn't it? Um, but this is actually my own yarn um, out of my Petoskey colorway. So that was pretty exciting. Um, it was fun and kind of satisfying, you know, to knit with your own stuff. But what I really find interesting is how these lines kind of match up with each other from one sock to the other. Oh, well, it kind of goes more that way. It actually shows better if I switch them, I think. Haha, -ha. yeah, see, look. See how that line kind of matches? It's so bizarre. I think it's so fun. Um, And up here, too. It does the same on the back. Let's see if I flip them. And what's really weird is that this was from the inner part of the cake, and this is from the outer part of the cake. So... I don't know. It's probably not that weird. I'm just not thinking it through. <laughs> I don't know. But um, I love them. I did my very first Fish Lips Kiss on these as well. And I did an, an invisible sewn bind off. Um, which it should be stretchier. But I... Okay, so don't watch a movie and bind off your socks at the same time. Because you pull too tight and don't pay attention. Well, at least I do. So I had to go through and loosen the whole thing up and, um, to get it to stretch a little bit more. So, um, yeah, it could be a bit, it could be stretchier. Oh, well, it's my first pair and they fit my mom cause that's who they're for. So as long as she can get her foot, you know, in it and it fits, I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> I mean, come on, she's got, she's got a pair of socks, so, uh, I think as for finished objects, that's pretty much all I have, um, those two for the most recent stuff, everything else I have, I, there's still works in progress because 
I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty bad at starting a project and then not finishing it. So, so I do have this half object, um, or hoe. I don't know why it makes me so uncomfortable to say hoe. You're not a hoe. Well, technically, I guess you are. But, um, I have, uh, one sock. And, um, this was actually my very first sock. And I was knitting it to, uh, test the skein of yarn that I uh, dyed up. Let's see if I can show you guys. My lighting is so bad since I lost the outside light. Can you see it? No. Well, it starts off black and it kind of, it starts turning into like this dark purple. I don't know if it's focusing or not. Um, but then it, I don't know what this line is. This shouldn't be here, but let's just ignore it. Um, it turns into like blue and then skip that line and then it turns into these reds and then starts to lighten up down here and the whole point is to look like a galaxy so um this is the skein is called andromeda and then i have the rest of it here for the second um sock so this color would fade into this and then ugh, i was trying to look at it earlier so it's a little mess up it goes from this like pink it gets really white, then it turns yellow, and then turquoise blue. I can't tell if that's focused. Um, and then a darker blue, and then, or a colder blue, rather, than a, um, the purple again. And then it goes back into black, which is actually, I pulled a lot of it out, which is like right there. There it is. I can't tell if you can see that or not. But, um... I still have to make the second sock. Where'd it go? So right now it is it is a little half object. Um, and it's a toe up afterthought sock. So I try to do something a little different with each uh, sock that I knit. Um, this is gonna this is toe up with an afterthought heel, and the other ones were they were toe up um knit two I was knitting the two together. So on magic loop, let's see if I'm getting any of my terms right. <laughs> I'm so nervous, like my brain is just not working. So nothing is in order or I'm not thinking straight. But I decided to make shorties and fish lips kiss on this one. And then this is an afterthought. So, um, so yeah, I kind of want to change it up with each pair that I make until I find the right one that, um, just like the right pattern or the right type of sock uh, that I like. So yeah, these are, that's my hoe, <laughs> my half object. And then I have a couple of whips at the moment um, because I can't stop starting and casting on. I have, what do they call that, starditis? <laughs> I can't stop. I constantly see something new that I want to try. And if I have the needles, I'll do it. So I think I need to like hide my needles or something, throw them out the window. Um, but I've committed myself to, how many, four knit-alongs <clears throat> between now and the end of the year, like New Year's. And I don't know what I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm, I have to back out <laughs> of something. There's, it's impossible. There's no way that I can make all of those. I am the slowest knitter on earth, but Let's just, let's just forget that for right now. Sorry about that. There are some technical difficulties, but these are my afterthought everything socks. Um, and then toe to toe. So instead of cuff to cuff, um, and I'm using my own yarn. So that's my, it's actually a purple base, but you can't really see in my terrible lighting. Um, this is my obsidian colorway. And then it goes into, get out of the way cables. It goes into um, my cauldron bubble colorway here. And then, so what I did is I also, because I get bored with vanilla socks, I decided to add in um, Hermione's Everyday heel pattern. I mean, sorry, Hermione's Everyday sock pattern into the front of the sock. And then um, I just kind of tapered it off at the end. So then the foot will be vanilla. Just kind of speed it up a little bit. But um, yeah, let's see. Hold on, let me turn that around. So that's my Cauldron Bubble colorway. And what I think is really fun is it, um, it kind of has its own spiral thing going on. 
So I don't know. I thought that was kind of fun, kind of cool. And um, so, yeah, so I've been working on it for a while. Probably, when did I start? Last week, maybe? I mean, I'm, I'm told you, I'm pretty slow, but so yeah, that's my, that, those are one of my whips and, um, look how cute, how cute is that squirrel progress keeper? Come on, let's see. Aha, there it is. My friend Robert gave that to me. Isn't that adorable? Ugh, I love it. Yeah, I know. I'm kind of weird. I'm sorry. <laughs> so my next whip, um, actually lives in this adorable project bag oh my god how cute is that they're all black cats with the yarn I love it so um it's actually my speckle and pop so if you're if there's anyone out there who um still you know doesn't want to see it it's still following the mystery look away um and if not I'm gonna hold it up in three two one yay I'm very far behind I mean, terribly. I am literally halfway through Clue 1. And the thing was released in, like, October, I think. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty bad. I'm pretty behind. But look at this thing. I love it. It's not my color scheme either. Like, these are a little too bright for me. But I figured if I'm doing a West Knits pattern, I might as well take advantage of, like, the colors and really like get something that pops and I don't know but the very first color that I use the main color right here is by a dyer um well her shop was called HKNT uh but she since changed it to Bay Street Yarns so this first color right here you know I'm going to show you the cake instead um if I'm moving around I'm sorry too much but but her shop is called Bay Street Yarns now. And this is her Blackberry Cheesecake colorway. Let's see if you guys can see that. Um, and it's this beautiful white uh, skein with like these pops of purple. I mean these speckles of purple. And uh, there we go. No, please focus. Be nice. Purples and um, black and some blues. And it's, it's just so pretty. Um, so that's my main color, my first main color. And then, um, right now I'm, I just finished blending it into this cake or in this colorway, which is, um, her Wisteria colorway. So also Bay Street Yarns. And I love this because it's like lilac and periwinkle with flecks of green. So this is so pretty. And then, let's see if I can find it. The bag's deep. Let's see. Uh, the third color that I'm going to use in the fade part is this uh, Raven colorway from Hedgehog Fibers. Sorry about the focusing. But um, this is so beautiful. And it's purples and it's got blues and a little bit of brown in it. And it's a single. Also, it's on our skinny singles base. So I'm so excited to use this. I have... I think I have ten, five more rows before I can get to it. Yeah, five more. Um, I am... I'm so far away. So, the pops in here are dyed by me. But the rest of them are... The rest of the yarn will not be mine. But yeah, so this is my speckle and pop. I'm excited to, to get it finished. I had to put it down for a while. Um, but now I'm starting to pick it back up again. So... I'm excited to finish this off and um, like I said I'm only about a quarter what? of the way through but oh man okay so I just noticed that I got wax all over my bag now that's a story um, I am a bit of a klutz and an idiot I was caking up this yarn and I lit a candle because in my dye room, it, my dye studio smells like vinegar. So um, my friend was coming over and she wanted me to cake this yarn up for her. So I lit a candle to kind of cut the smell of like wet wool and vinegar. And um, as I was caking this 
skein up, I the candle fell and spilled wax all over my project bag. And you know what? You can't see it that much on screen right now, but um, it used to just be all red. If you check my Instagram feed, you'll see how there was just like this wax everywhere. And this one shows it too. Oh my God. But I threw them, not this one, but I threw the others in the washer, hoping to get it out. And some of it came out. But this this wax, it's really weird because it's more greasy. Oh, come on, focus. It's more greasy than it is um, waxy, so it wouldn't chip off. The minute I would try to chip it off or iron it off, it would just melt. It would turn into grease and melt right into the bag. So, so yeah. My beautiful stitching closet bag. But, but that's okay. There's no point in getting upset over it, right? It's just a couple of bags. This makes me sad. But yeah, so I just saw I got a little bit, a little bit on the black cats. But that'll come off. It doesn't even show. So actually that leads me right into acquisitions. I got a couple of things um, this last week, including this beautiful, just ignore that part, um, Thimble and Thread Make Notions pouch. And what's so cute is it has its own like wax seal on it. Oh, I love it so much. Now it looks like someone bled all over my Hogwarts letter, but, but yeah, we'll just pretend that it's not there. And like I showed you before, the Manicori bag. Um, I got it from the wonderful Eleni, and let me show you the inside. She has the cutest, um, the cutest lining, and then there's her name right there. Ah, Mana Cory. <clears throat> I love her stuff. This bag is so well made. Um, and it comes with this little progress keeper, this little mushroom house. How cute is that? And this heavy duty strap. So I love this thing. It's my favorite bag and it's so well made. It's perfect. So I also got this beautiful yarn bowl from Remembrance's Pottery. Oh my gosh, look how great that is. It's this awesome birch design. Yeah, and it has the two holes right here for your needles and then the cutout for your yarn to feed through and it's just, it's perfect. I love it. And my favorite part is that I can put the yarn in and it won't pop out. So my other, I have a couple other yarn bowls, but um, they all, the yarn always pops out. So for here, it like stays nice and, you know, it stays inside. So that's, that's my favorite part because it holds it so well. So I got that. I'm going to leave it here. And she also sent me this adorable, um, I use it for my notions, uh, but it's this little saucer. Look how pretty that is. Like, her work is so good. I love her stuff. So, go check out Remembrance's Pottery because her stuff is amazing. Um, oh, actually, I have a couple more. I love her. So, <laughs> um, I have these Sugar Skull buttons that I got from her not too long ago. Um... I love this colored one also let's see and what I really like about them is she glazes both sides so if you hold on I gotta hold this up against something there we go if you turn it around ah, it's a glaze on both sides so it's really finished it's a really nice finishing touch um, it's really smooth and I don't know, they're just, they're just so cute. Look, now I'm a sugar skull. <laughs> um, I also got these adorable stitch markers from my friend Robert, like I showed you before, but he sent me a whole, um, a whole set of them. And how cute are those? Let's see, is it focusing? Can't tell. Ah. Rude rabbit. You can stick your butt in their face. Alright, can you see those? Alright, there we go. It comes with like this leaf and a pine cone and this rabbit and a fawn. 
And then this uh, Acorn Progress Keeper. So he has, what is that, four stitch markers and then a, two Progress Keepers. And they all come on this adorable bracelet. Like, how adorable is that? Oh, thank you, Robert. I love them so much, and you need to open a shop. Like, seriously, pronto. I will buy all the things. <laughs> so, yeah, um, those were some of my acquisitions. And last but not least, I have this skein. Oh, my gosh, how beautiful is that? This is from my friend Corolla of Otherworldly Yarns, and it's so beautiful. I keep looking over there. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, let me see. Let me show you her, her card. So this is Corolla of Otherworldly Yarns. She's a UK dyer, and her stuff is amazing. Ah, there it is there she has this one is called actually toxic fairy dust and it's just it's so colorful and it's so crazy oh I love it um and she has this other skein that I wanted to buy so bad let me just wrap this up real quick called I think it was called the ritual oh, it was so pretty it was like these deep purples and reds and pinks I think but um I have too many purples so I thought this is this was so colorful and so fun and it is on her Oberon base which is an 8515 superwash poly with nylon um, sock yarn and uh, you get 400 meters per hundred grams so this thing is so soft and so squishy I love it Seriously, go check out her stuff as well. She's awesome. And what's so cute is each card, uh, well, let me show you her card first. So, and what's so adorable about all of her skeins is they come with a little snippet of a story um, on the back of the card. And then this one is Toxic Fairy Dust, Amber Fox, which is her main character. Uh, Amber Fox watched in bemused wonderment as the pixie department of the environment escorted the fairy factory workers away. It was only later that she learned of the dangerous nature of tainted fairy dust. So, it's so cute. Oh my gosh, she's adorable. I love her stuff. And she also, actually I forgot to show you, sent me, let me see, these guys. I don't know if they show up. These, this like Saturn and knotted stitch marker. There it is. She sent me these guys. How beautiful are those? Saturn is my favorite planet. So, so I love it. Ah, they're so cute. So those go on my notions, uh, my notions saucer thing from Natalie. Um, so yeah, that, that's it for my acquisitions because I've been trying to be good. I have to stop spending on myself and start spending a little more on my shop. So that's it for my acquisitions. Just a couple of treats for my birthday and stuff to myself. Um, and, uh, and that's about it. I think I don't have anything else to show or talk about except for shop news, which, um, if you're not interested in watching shop news, I will say goodbye to you now. Thank you so much for sticking with me this long. Um, I'm pretty scatterbrained, but I really appreciate it. So I will say goodnight to you now. And um, if you're interested in some shop news, stick around. So shop news. Um, last Wednesday, I released my Christmas collection called Hoobalation Jubilation. And it is a... Uh, a collection based off of How the Grinch Stole Christmas. And um, it had three ske full skeins and then a mini set. And here it is. So the first one is called Holiday Cheermeister. And it's a red, white, and green colorway with yellow speckles um, on my gold Selena base. If you can see that, I can't tell. But it was inspired by the sweater that the Grinch wears um, when he's at the Jubilation. So it's like a white sweater with red stripes and then the green uh, Christmas tree in the middle. 
And then the little yellow speckles represent the bells and the lights that are on it as well. So this is on my Layla base, which is a 75, 20, and 5 super wash merino nylon and gold selena. Um, so there's that one. And then the next one is this guy, which is called It's Because I'm Green, Isn't It? And it's based off of the Grinch. So it's a bunch of, here, this is actually better um, on this side. So it's a bunch of um, different greens, different shades of green. Um, and it's speckled with turquoise and dark pinks and reds um, and different colors like that. So, so this is available in my Lunar Base, which is an 80-20 Superwash Merino Nylon uh, sock yarn. And then it's also available in, I don't have it with me, my Damask Base, which is a DK base. And um, that's 75-25. Merino nylon. Yes. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's it's because I'm green, isn't it? And then next we have Fahu Fores, which is um, based off of the song that they sing at the end of the movie around the Christmas tree. So the white is to symbolize the snow and then um, the colors are for all like the Who's in Whoville stuff like that like a close-up it's got blues and reds and greens and pinks for Cindy Lou and a little bit of turquoise for Martha May um so yeah so that's the last of the big skeins and then I had my mini skeins that came out called Mary Grinchmas so um they just remind me of like Santa Grinch <laughs> I should be looking here not there Sorry. Um, so that's what I had loaded into the shop last week. This week, um, I'm going to have a couple more uh, character skeins. And the first one being Martha May. So it's this really fun um, uh, turquoise skein with pinks and blues and yellows. And a lot of the colors are the same because I want them to be able to to go together but she kind of stands out a little so her colors don't exactly match up but I kind of did that on purpose because she didn't really I mean I know she fit in but she was I don't know I wanted her to be a little different a little standout-ish I want her to stand out a little bit so um this is let me undo it for you this Martha May will be available on my um, Lunar Base, which is my 8020 Superwash Merino Nylon. Let's see. Can you see that? Uh, focus. Nope. Uh, oh, now it's not focusing on me either. There we go. I goofed. I messed up. Okay, so it's available on my Superwash Merino, my 8020 Superwash Merino Nylon um, sock yarn. And it's also, hold on, let's just take this away and put that over there. Available in my ooh, Damask weight, my Damask base, which is a DK weight. And it's also available on these mini, mini skeins. So I love the mini skeins. I think they're my favorite. I mean, I love the, the full skeins too, but these are just so fun. So much color and a little bit of yarn. So I have those. That's one of the colorways coming out. I have a couple more that are in the works, um, so I don't have them to show you right now. Um... But I have another set of mini skeins going in called uh, All Kerbobbled. So these are just green, red, and gold. So yeah, those are All Kerbobbled. And I think they would like pair really nicely with, um, like, it's because I'm green, isn't it? I think those would look pretty cool um, together. Like, 
Uh, these would be nice heels, toes, and cuffs to this sock or something. Or I think these go fun together. So the Martha May Huvier skein with um, Fahu Forest. I think looks pretty wintry. Doesn't necessarily have to be Christmas, I guess. So, so yeah. And then that actually that skein also looks really nice with Merry Grinchmas. So I think that's it. I have a couple of um, like super minis, I like to call them. Let's see, they're a little bit darker. They're a darker version of the Martha May. Uh, let's see. Sorry. So they're a darker version of the Martha May. I don't know, maybe I'll call these Dump It to Crump It or something. I don't know. They're pretty much the same thing with a little bit of reds and greens in them as well. And I have a new skein that I just dyed up. Um, I don't know if I'm going to put it in, in with the collection or this might just be a new collection altogether. Uh, but let's see. I don't know if you can see that because of the lighting, but this skein is my favorite. It is um, like dark, dark blues with purples and um, like all these different shades of blue and purple and then some black. Um, and it's on my singles base, which is my veil base, but I, I'm probably going to be putting it on a lot more bases. Let me see if you can see it better this way. Hold on. It's hard to focus on because there's nothing really there to catch. Yeah, that's not showing off. It should coming off too well. But um showing up too well. I can't speak. It's it's too late now. But yeah, so that was kind of a a happy experiment. I was trying to get a color similar to that, but I didn't expect it to come out this pretty. For me, actually. I love it. Um I might be putting this into my Oracle shawl when I uh does it show? Can you see? Let me see. Let me grab. Ugh. I'm thinking of putting these two together for my Oracle shawl. Maybe that'll show up a little bit better next to the other yarn. I don't know if you can see that. Ugh, I'm so excited. I can't. Ooh, that actually. You can see that a little bit. See all those colors? Anyways, I'm excited to start these. I think this one and. A light skein. I don't know what I'm going to pair with these two, but these will be my oracle shawl. Um, whoa, it got blurry all of a sudden. Well, and that's it. Um, if you stuck around until now, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Um, it was really fun starting this nerve wracking, um, and far too long. I think I'm going on four days now. <laughs> But that's okay. Um, I need to break out of my comfort zones, right? So thank you very much for sticking around this long, if you made it to the end. And um, stay tuned for some uh, coupon codes coming up uh, probably this weekend. I have to check when the release date is because they're preset for me. So. Um, but there will be a coupon code for, uh, Black Friday into early December. So, um, I will put all that information. Well, I'll have that all, um, on my Instagram when it comes time for the coupon codes, but, uh, just keep your eyes out. You can get, you can get some discounts on yarn for Christmas. So, uh, thank you again for hanging out with me and listening to my jabber. And I hope you guys have a great week and hopefully I'll see you next week. Bye. Whoa. What is going on with my hair?
is a hot mess, guys. Jeez, how do you do this? Focus. My hands are in the way. I can't see what I'm doing. Let's do this. Ooh, sorry. What did I do? Anyways. Hold on. Is it focusing? I can't see. Sorry, there were some technical difficulties. <laughs> So yeah.